Let's consider finite volume discretization for a nonlinear equation. It turns out the governing equations for fluid flow are highly nonlinear. For example, if you consider the 2D incompressible momentum equation, the x component of it, you have this equation. So this represents momentum balance in the x direction for an infinitesimal fluid particle. And that term in within the brackets represents the acceleration experienced by the infinitesimal fluid particle. This term here is a product of u, which is unknown, and partial u partial x, which is unknown. So it's a product of two unknowns, and so that's a nonlinear term. Similarly, this is a product of two unknowns, and that's also a nonlinear term. So let's see how to handle nonlinear terms. And we'll do that by taking a previous model equation and adding a simple nonlinear term, which is much simpler than this. So the intention is to keep the details simple, but bring out the major ideas. So we add a simple nonlinear term with the same boundary condition. So the only difference from the linear case is that term. And this is a nonlinear boundary value problem, as are most real problems in CFD. And this term represents, uh, alpha u squared represents body force per unit volume. And it appears in ferrofluids. It doesn't appear in conventional fluids. So, and <clears throat> if, uh, so here you have the pressure pushing the particle in the direction of the flow. And so that term will be positive if dp dx is negative. And that, if alpha is positive, that term is going to be negative. So it will act as a drag force on the, on the fluid particle. And so to do the finite volume discretization, we need to convert this into an integral equation. And so this term is handled the same as before. This term is handled the same as before. So let's take a look at this term. So this is the integral form of that term for a control volume representing the jade cell. So for that control volume, if you integrate it over that volume, you have this term here. And let's see what the term gives us. Alpha is a constant, so we can bring that out of the integral. U is a constant over the cell and equal to the cell center value. That's an approximation we are making in our numerical solution. So that's going to be a constant over the control volume, so I can bring that out of the integral. And so this just, you know, so this becomes minus alpha u squared times the, the, uh, the volume of the, this is just going to be, you know, integral of dv, which is going to give me the volume of the cell. So that's how I get this, and delta x delta y times 1 perpendicular to the screen is going to be the volume and I, I didn't write the 1 so you get that term. So that's going to be an additional term in your discrete equation. So that term, so when I write the discrete equation for the jade cell uh, for which is an interior cell, I get the same term as before for the shear, I get the same term as before for the pressure gradient and now I have an additional nonlinear term, and that comes from here. And all this is divided through by delta x and delta y, so you get only minus alpha uj squared. So what we have here is a nonlinear algebraic equation. And so, as, uh, which means that, you know, in this case, in the nonlinear case, the equation, the discrete equation, at each cell is nonlinear, and so we have a system of simultaneous nonlinear algebraic equations. Let's see how to solve that. What we do is linearize about a guess value. So we write uj as some guess value plus a correction. And so and we linearize the term using Newton linearization, assuming delta u is small. So some function f of u, uh, we can write as f of u guess plus delta u, and then expand it out in a Taylor series. So that's the first term in the Taylor series, f of u guess, plus delta u times f prime of u guess, plus you get higher order terms. 
So they are going to be proportional to delta u squared and delta u cubed and so on. And if delta u is small, we can neglect those higher order terms and we get um, this expression. In our case, f of u is, you know, we are interested in linearizing u squared. So we use uh, u squared for f of u. f prime of u is 2u guess. And f prime of u guess is, you know, 2u guess. So, and so we can substitute um, this over here and, or rather this over here and we get the following expression, okay, for u squared. And so this is neglecting, you know, terms of the order of delta u squared and delta u cubed and so on. So I've shown that this is an approximation. And then I substitute delta u as u minus u guess, and then I can collect like terms and I get this following ex linearized expression. And on the right-hand side, u appears as a linear term because u guess is known is a known guess value, and u guess squared is a known guess value. And then I can evaluate that at for the jade cell, and I get that expression. And so again, that's a linear um, term in u j. So I can use that. I can use that linearized expression for u j squared and go back and substitute into the nonlinear discrete equation. And in the process, I get the linearized discrete equation that looks like that. So that's a linearized term. That's that term multiplied by minus alpha. And in the process of doing this, I have introduced a linearization error, which is of the order of delta u squared or u minus u guess squared. And so as u guess tends towards the true solution, u, that linearization error is going to tend to zero, which means that we need to drive our guess towards the true solution. And we do that by iterating through iteration. And we will talk about the iterating scheme in just a little bit. But before that, let me highlight the two major sources of error when you're solving a nonlinear equation using the finite volume method. First, you have the linearization error, and which this error, which you reduce via iterations on any given mesh. And by iterating, they drive the, the guess solution to the true solution. And this I need to do on any given mesh. But then I also have the truncation or discretization error which I reduce by refining the mesh. In a linear problem, I have only this error. Um, but in a nonlinear problem, I have both these errors, and I need to worry about whether both these errors are sufficiently small in my CFD solution. Let's consider the iterative solution procedure we use to solve the system of linearized equations and to drive the guess towards the true value. At each iteration, what we have is a system of linearized equations, but we do not invert that system exactly because it doesn't make sense to invert an approximate system of equations exactly. Instead, what we do is we update uj cell by cell using the linearized equations. This works out to be solving the matrix row by row. Let's see how we derive the update equation for cell J. That's the update equation for UJ. For interior cells, previously we had the following linearized discrete equation. Okay, so this is what we had before. And we take this expression and we solve for UJ. And if we do that, we get an expression like that. So this term here in the numerator comes from there and there. This term here comes from that term. And this term here comes from that term. In the denominator, the coefficient, so 2 mu comes from here. And that term comes from here. 
So now I have an update equation for uj. And in evaluating that, I use the latest guess values I have for the um, for uj's and uj minus 1, uj plus 1. So I maintain one array containing the latest uj values. And when I come to update the j cell, I take the, so I, you know, to calculate that, I take the j minus 1 element of the array. To calculate that, I take the j plus 1 element of the array. To get that, I take the jth element of the array, and similarly the jth element of the array. And then I calculate the right-hand side. And so now that's the new value for uj, and I put it back as the jth element of the array. So before my update, this was the value in the jth element of the array. After the update, this is overwritten by this this value and you can do this on the computer because you can write expressions such as x equal to x plus 2 so you take x you add 2 to it and put it back in the same slot and which means that the computer implementation is pretty straightforward so the update equation will be u j minus 1 so that's a j minus 1 element of the u array this is the j plus 1 element of the u array. This is going to be the value in the jth element of the array, and so on. So that's how you implement the update equation. I've shown you the update equation for the interior cells, and we use the same procedure to derive the update equations for boundary cells. So we first obtain the nonlinear discrete equations for the boundary cells. So that's for the uh, boundary cell at the lower boundary, and that's for the boundary cell at the upper boundary. This equation is the same as before, except for this nonlinear term. And this equation is the same as before, except for that nonlinear term. So we linearize the discrete equations and to get this expression. So this term here is a linearized version of that term and this term here is a linearized version of that term and the linearization happens about the guess values for the first cell and the nth cell. Now since we have the linearized discrete equations we can rearrange it so we can rearrange this equation to get an expression for u1 and that is the update equation for u1 and if you rearrange that you get rearrange this equation, you get that equation. And similarly, if you rearrange this equation to get an update equation for un, you get that equation. Okay, so now you have the update expressions for the first cell and the nth cell, and the computer implementation is shown over here. So, for instance, if I want u2, I just take the second element of the u array, and that's shown over here. If I want the guess value for u1, I just take the first element of the u array, and that's shown over here, and so on. And similarly for the end cell.